It appears that despite several debates in which Olivia Chow was targeted, she remains the candidate to beat in the Toronto mayoral election. A Main Street research poll taken on Tuesday and Wednesday shows Chow still well in front at 32 percent support among decided voters. That's double the support for Anna Bailau, Mark Saunders and Josh Matlow. They still sit at 12 and 10 percent support respectively. Anthony Fury sits ahead of Mitzi Hunter. Brad Bradford and Chloe Brown are at the bottom of the list of the eight candidates, including in, in this poll. The margin of error is plus or minus 3% at the 95% confidence level. Now, Keto Maggie is the president of Main Street Research and joins us now live via FaceTime. Keto, good to talk to you again on this Friday morning. So we've already seen yeah, a couple right. of feisty debates, you know, in the last couple of weeks. Have you seen any of that impacting your polling results? We see Chow's numbers maybe shaking a little bit when you, when you combine all the votes or all the numbers. Okay. It, it, it's kind of hard to say whether or not this the, the movement we're seeing this week with Matlow up a little bit and, and Chow down about three points, whether that's really significant or noise. Too early to tell. Sometimes the impact from debates and things like that um, takes time to settle in. Um, what I'm most interested in is the fact that you know we were in the field up until Thursday, which is when signs went out, and that's the day that Chow did the worst. So hmm. I'm not sure what that means just yet, but... But often, now that we're in the short strokes, you know, the signs are up, the election's at the end of the month, more people are going to start paying attention. And, and that's when I think if there is going to be a movement, that, that's when it'll happen. Keto, you've been doing this for years. And when you talk about, you know, people maybe perhaps focusing a little more now, you know, we're down to just over three weeks away. Does that tend to change the kind of way you get responses? I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't have a you know, complete understanding of the science behind what you do, but I know you people have to answer a phone and accept that they're going to take a, you know, five minute poll. And as they're paying more yeah. attention, do you see more people start to participate? Yeah, that's what I mean about if, if there is a shift that, mm. you know, up until now, uh, you know, uh, uh, not everybody knows that there's an election going on. They kind of vaguely know, yeah, John Tory stepped down at some point. Now the signs are out and, and people kind of in, right in their neighborhoods, they'll be seeing their neighbors with signs out as they drive to work every day or, or going about their business. And, and so I, I expect that we're going to be talking to a, a different audience, more people who are going to be paying attention and whether or not that, that ends up changing who we talk to and the opinions that they express to us. Mm -hmm. um, I would expect to see that movement uh, starting this week, but really with the signs going out yesterday, we were only in the field one out of three days in this poll, so um, more I would expect to see. If we see movement, it will happen probably next week. Okay, and one name that we are seeing moving uh, in, in not only your polls, Keto, but some other polls that we've been pollsters we've been speaking to is the name Anthony Fury. He's kind of up in your poll amongst decided voters. He's now pulling it around. I think that's nine percent. Uh, he's making a move here, but I mean, it's still a long way from Chow level. Long way from Chow level, but yeah, absolutely, Anthony Fury's for real. I, I noticed uh, uh, at least one other poll has him in the same level. He was at nine point two percent this week, which is slightly up from last week, but. Um, yeah, and, and, and it is, you know, it is significant because he hasn't had a lot of, um, you know, media exposure or, or, or necessarily advertising. So um, seeing him this high at this stage is, um, is interesting. Mm -hmm. let's, let, let's talk about this. And, and look, I'm, I'm a news anchor, not a mathematician. You're a scientist who does polling. If you take Anna Bailau, 16, Brad Bradford at 4%, uh, Josh Matlow at 10%, that's about 30 there, 30% of the poll. Does somebody have to drop out to give Olivia Chow some sort of a challenge here, or do maybe two people have to drop out and say, you know what, back X candidate, so there's sort of more of a competitive race here? You know, with the, with the undecided still around, you know, it dropped below 20% this week, so that's significant. But um, as, as I said last week, a lot of this undecided vote isn't truly undecided at this point. I, I believe it to be not Chow vote. So... When we see that undecided drop below 10%, and if if no one has really broken out at that point, I think that's when it'll be, when, when I can say, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not enough to catch Olivia Chow. Right now, there's still enough of that undecided. Where it's going to break, how it's going to break, we're probably going to know that in the next week. Right, okay. Of, because of the science, really, is, what, is what's going to do it. All right, Keto, thanks for breaking the numbers down again this week. Appreciate this. Thank you for your time.